All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video and welcome to my wood shop. And I've been out here kicking up the dust, as you can see, making a new table for my 3D printers to sit on in the Lynn Dizzle studio. And I ran into a problem that I've run into several times when I'm out here and kicking up all of this dust is I really wish I had a great way to capture all of that dust, right? And I have a couple of different vacuums here with all kinds of different sizes. I have saws, planers, and everything that I'm using to make this table. And I would love to do a little bit better job of dust collection and not kick up so much dust. And the issue is, is finding these adapters that will actually fit on your machine and what you're looking for. And I've done searches for the tools that I have and the vacuum that I have, and I just can't get that stuff right. So what do we do to solve the problem? Well, some of you know, during my live streams, I've been talking about using Fusion 360 and parametric modeling here lately. And really this is a powerful tool where we can just make a template of one of these adapters and all we'll have to do is measure for the big end, measure for the little end, enter it into some parameters, and send this directly to our bamboo printer to print this out in ASA or ABS or whatever it happens to be. So all we'll need is to complete this project is our trusty pair of uh, calipers where we'll need to measure the opening that we need the depth that we need on each side of this thing so that we can make our model and we'll do it with parameters as well as use the power of parametric modeling and Fusion 360. We'll only have to make this model once and from there on out, we'll just measure our tools and our vacuum with our calipers here and we'll be able to print out a nice little adapter. So no more searching around, hunting, down your part number or your model number of whatever tool it is that, you're, uh, that you need to use. Let's just make a template that we can easily print out. And I'll tell you, these things print out in like 35, 40 minutes. So it's less than the time it would take you to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and back or to the home center and back for those of you that don't live here. So today we'll be learning how to do a little bit of parametric modeling We'll learn how to set up the parameters in Fusion 360, and we'll go ahead and make a template for these adapters for our tools here in the workshop. So if all of that sounds good, then sit back and relax and I'll get everything ready. All right, so here we are in Fusion 360, and uh, if you've never used Fru Fusion 360 before, uh, be sure you watch a couple of videos and learn a little bit about the basics of it and how to, you know, move around, you know, the workspace and everything. Uh, so the first thing that we'll need to do uh, is save our project, and we'll want to save this to the YouTube folder and call this Adapters. You can call it whatever you want, but just be sure to save it and save it into the folder that you want it in. So before we do any modeling at all, we're going to set up all of our parameters. Okay. And all of our parameters can be found under the modify button right here and down here where it says change parameters. And in here, we're going to add all of the different parameters that we need for the model as well as all of the parameters from our tools and our vacuums um, that we measured. So I went ahead and measured my track saw, my planer, as well as my uh, spindle sander. And then I measured my shop vac and my Festool vacuum. So we'll enter all of those parameters in there and then we'll go ahead and make our model and I'll show you how you can make the different adapters very, very easily with all of your tools in their shop. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we'll do is start to set up 
the basics of um, the model, right? So generally when we're making one of these adapters, one end is bigger than the other, right? If they were the same size, we wouldn't really need the adapter unless we were trying to extend some hoses or something, and this would work on that as well. Um, but we'll start with, there needs to be a big size and a little size to the adapter, right? And the big size is always gonna be on the bottom. Um, whenever we print because it just seems to print better that way for me so what we'll do is we'll call this the large side diameter and we're just going to make this any number right now just may just put any number we're going to change this here in a minute but um, we can't change it right now you'll see why here in a minute and make sure that you can uh, spell while you're creating videos for uh, youtube that's always nice so we'll need the diameter um of that right the next thing that we're going to need is the large size or the large side depth so how long we want that adapter size to be. And again, make this a random number. We'll change that here in a minute. And then we'll need the same things for the small side. All right, then there's a couple other things that we'll need for the model. And um, one of them is the wall thickness. So how thick we want the wall. There's two places where we'll need to put that. Um, so we'll wanna make sure if we ever change that, that it changes in both places. So we'll go ahead and make that a parameter. And we'll start with three. And then the last thing is the part where it funnels down from the large size to the small size. There needs to be a distance between there. So we'll go ahead and do that. And that tool is called loft. So we'll call this loft depth. And let's go ahead and set that at 25 millimeters. Okay, so those are all the parameters for the model. Now let's start entering um, all of our tool sizes. And you could go in here and just enter the sizes of your tools and do all of that. But if you ever want to reference these in the future, say you get a new vacuum or a new tool that you want to do um, an adapter for, it would be nice to have these parameters, um, you know, saved in here already for us. So let's go ahead and enter those in there and I'll do the first one and then we'll do a time lapse as I enter the rest of them. Okay, so I'll show you the first one. So the first one that we'll do is the Makita track saw that I have. and we'll need the Makita track diameter. And this was an inside diameter. So this is something to think about if you want the adapter to go on the inside of the little tube or on the outside. Um, if you want it to go on the inside, that's fine. Um, that's going to be the normal diameter. If you want to go on the outside, we would need to subtract the wall thickness. So that's another reason why we need wall thickness. So we'll get to that. The Makita track saw inside diameter for mine was 35 millimeters. So we'll enter that into there and then we'll do the same thing for the depth. The depth that we wanted for that is 25 millimeters. All right, so let me enter the rest of these real quick and I'll meet you right back. All right, so on my win sander, I need the adapter to go on the outside of the hole, not on the inside. So I'm going to need to add the wall thickness twice to the diameter that I need there. 
so that it will fit on the inside of that. So that diameter that I measured with my calipers was 39. So we'll need 39 millimeters. And what's cool about this is now we can reference the wall thickness. We're gonna hit enter times two. Okay, so our wall thickness is three times two is six. 39 plus six is indeed 45. And what's cool about setting up all of these parameters is if I ever change the wall thickness, it will update on my wind sander diameter as well. Okay. All right, now that we have everything entered and you can see that I have all the tools and everything entered, now we can go ahead and start to set this up for our first model. So the first thing that we'll do is the Makita track saw to the um, shop vac. So let's make an adapter for that. So let's look at the Makita track saw diameter is 35. The shop vac diameter is going to be 36.5. So it's just a little bit bigger on the shop vac side. So we'll start with that one as the bigger one and the Makita track saw as the smaller one. So for the diameter here, we'll just double click on this and we will just click the shop vac diameter and you just hit enter. And that sets that as the shop vac diameter or for the large size diameter. Same thing for the depth. Now you see how easy it is to do this now. Now we want the Makita track saw diameter. And the Makita track depth. All right, so now we're ready. We have all of our parameters and now you can see all we have to do is change these. If we wanna add a new tool, we just add it down here and then we'll reference it up here. Couldn't be easier there. We got past the hard part. Um, so now let's get into actually doing the model. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is set this up in order to easily do a model. And the easiest way to do this in Fusion, C Fusion 360 that I have found, and again, you professionals in Fusion 360 may think that this isn't the best way, um, and it may not be the best way, but it does work, is we're gonna actually need to create four planes or four work uh, spaces for us to use to create this model. And what those are is the bottom of the model, the top of our first part of the adapter. So the depth of the adapter, that's why that's important. Then it'll be th that loft or that funneling piece. Um, that'll take us up to the very bottom of the small adapter. And that's the third workplace that we'll be on. And then the depth of the small adapter would be that last and final plane. Now we've already set all of that up with our large and our small diameters and depths. So let's go ahead, our, our depths are what are gonna be important here. So let's go ahead and start creating our planes. So what we can do is uh, create a offset plane. The first plane is going to have an offset of zero and it's just going to be on the bottom right here. Okay. So the next thing that we'll need to do is we can hit construct here every time where we can just hit this. It's um, already set to offset plane as we'll hit our second offset plane. And that plane will be on the same, you know, level, it'll just be a certain amount up. And that certain amount up is going to be our large side depth. So 
So you'll see that when we click that, it creates that plane, that exact depth up. Pretty easy so far. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK there. So we have two of our planes. So this would be the distance for the large adapter from the beginning, right? This would be our depth. The next place that we'll do is the funneling thing. And what we'll need to do is create another offset plane there. So we'll hit, uh, you know, create an offset plane. We'll want to offset it from this plane. And that distance is that loft depth that I talked about before. And this is going to be how deep or how long it does the funneling on there. So we can always adjust that in our parameters. So now you'll see that it moved it up 25 millimeters, which was the uh, depth that we had set that to. And you'll see that it's referenced right here as loft depth. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And now the last uh, plane that we'll need to create will be the depth of the small um, adapter, right? And that'll take us to the very end of the adapter. So we'll hit offset plane again. We'll want to offset off of this plane. And the distance that we'll want to do that is the small side depth. And that takes us up again. And if you remember, all of those were set up to that. So now what we'll want to do is draw a circle on each one of these. And this is going to be in these two will be the same circle and these two will be the same circle, right? And this will be the large side diameter, large side diameter, small side diameter, small side diameter. Okay, so how we do that is we can, the easiest way is to just right click on the plane, hit create sketch. We're going to go to our circle tool. We're going to start at this little place, which is called the origin. And this is going to be the large side diameter. And then we'll click the mouse to go ahead and set that. And then we'll hit finish sketch and that put that on that plane. So the next thing that we'll do is right click on this plane, hit create sketch. And same thing, we'll do a circle starting from the origin and that is gonna be the large side diameter once again. We'll use the mouse button to finish it hit finish sketch and we'll see that we have those two circles. So let's make the last two circles. We'll right click on that plane, hit create sketch. We'll go to our circle. This circle will be the small side diameter. We'll hit enter and the mouse button to set it. We'll finish the sketch. And we'll do the very last one by right clicking, creating sketch, circle, start at the origin. And this is going to be the small side diameter. And trust me, we only have to do this crazy modeling one time. And then when we change the parameters, all of this model will change. Okay, so there's two different tools that we're going to need in this piece of it to kind of make the outer shape of um, the adapter, and then we'll use two tools to then shave the inside of it out. Um, so the first tool that we'll want to do is to extract, right, because we'll want to extract straight up into this circle and then do the same thing from this circle to this circle. So in order to do that, we can just hit the extract extrude or extract, whatever you want to call it, extrude. We're going to click on this circle and then we're going to um, change this extent type to object and we'll click on the center of our circle there and you'll see that it extruded up to there. And we'll hit OK, and we'll want to leave this on new body. 
All right, so the next thing that we'll need to do is to do our loft from here to here. And since the uh, diameters here aren't that different, we won't see a big funneling effect, but we'll go ahead and get that set in there. And when we change up um, the, to a different tool, we'll see that the funneling effect takes a shape. So how we do the loft is we go over here to create, we click on loft. And we're going to select this face and then the face of the circle. And you'll see that it barely tapers. Um, again, whenever we have um, diameters that are a little bit different here, it will uh, change its shape. So we'll want to uh, make sure this is on join and do all of that and hit OK. And then the last thing that we'll want to do is extrude straight up for the last part of the adapter. So we'll go ahead and hit extrude from here to object. We'll wanna make sure to join this one as well. And then click on there and hit okay. And now we have the start of our adapter here. But what we do need is we do need to hollow out the inside of it. So let's make sure all of our sketches and all of our planes are turned off and let's go ahead and hollow out the inside. And that's pretty easy with the shell command. We'll click on there and here it's asking for an inside thickness. And here's where we can reference our wall thickness and hit okay. But what we'll see is the bottom is still solid. All right, so the last thing that we'll wanna do there is we'll want to create that same thickness here and then hollow it out. So how we're gonna do that is to right click on this plane, hit create sketch, and we're gonna use this offset looking one right here. So we'll click on that and we'll click on this curve and it's going to want to go outwards with the offset here. Um, and how we get it to go inwards is by hitting negative. And again, this is going to be the wall thickness. So now if we ever change the wall thickness, this will change as well. We'll hit okay and we'll see that we have this offset set. So we'll go ahead and finish our sketch. And we'll hit the extrude, select that smaller circle that we just did. And the thickness is going to be the negative wall thickness once again. And we want to make sure that's a cut. Hit OK. And now we'll see that we have our adapter. So again, if we change the parameters here will actually change the um, size of everything that we're doing here. So for example, let's do my Makita planer to my Festool vacuum. So on here, we're gonna type in the planer diameter and then we'll ta type in the planer depth for this one. And then the smaller side is going to be the Festool vacuum diameter. Festool vacuum depth. And we'll see just by changing those to the tools that we've already put in there, we'll see that we now have a new adapter and you'll see that the funnel effect takes effect um, more dramatically here than it did in the last one that we did. But you see how easy we went from one model to the next um, just by changing the parameters. And you'll see that everything is, you know, hollowed out and ready to go in there. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up by naming it. And then we'll round a couple of the edges to make this um, a little bit easier to do. And then I'll show you how to send it to Bamboo Studio and print this thing out. All right, so it'd be nice to have, you know, Makita to Festool written on here for this particular adapter so I know what it is afterwards, right? So what we'll want to do is um, create a sketch. And we'll want to do that on this side plane here. Or you can click on right up here. 
And what we'll want to do is create text. So we'll create a text box that kind of fits on this face right here. Okay. And here it says sample text, but what we'll write in there is Makita to Festool. And you'll see that it's way too big. So let's mark that down a little bit. Let's make it centered. And that should be good. So we'll go ahead and hit OK on there. And we'll go ahead and finish the sketch. So now what we'll do is we'll hit Create, Emboss, reference that sketch, select this face, and then we'll select Deboss to make it go inside and I'll hide this sketch so you can see what it's doing. We'll hit OK. And now you can see that we've actually engraved that into this adapter. All right, so with a name on it, the last couple of things that we'll wanna do is we may wanna round this edge off a little bit since it's going on the inside, make it a little bit easier to get on the hose there. And how we do that is to select a fillet, we'll select that edge, give it a radius of one millimeter there just to give it a slight rounded edge you could do the bottom one as well um, but it's not necessary all right so now that our model is good to go we'll want to save it and it's going to say version description and let's call this Festool to makita and hit okay and now let's send it to our printer Okay, so how we do that is we're going to click on File, and we're going to go to 3D Print. You can export it as an STL file, but you can actually send this directly to Bamboo Studio. So we're going to hit 3D Print. We're going to select the object that we want to print, which is this one. Refinement, we'll want to set to high. Our whole model has been based in millimeters, so we want to make sure that that's set. Send to 3D Print Utility, we'll want to make sure that that's checked. Print Utility Custom, and we'll see that this is already set up to Bamboo Studio, but how you do that is you hit Application, Select from My Computer, and you'll want to go to this PC, your local disk, Program Files, Bamboo Studio, and then select Bamboo Studio. Okay, and once you do that, now it's set up to go ahead and send this to Bamboo Studio. And what's cool about this is when you hit OK, it goes ahead and opens up Bamboo Studio. All right, so we'll see that the model is already loaded in here for us. So we'll go ahead and change this to number seven for the ASA that is in slot seven. And all I did to do that was just push the number seven. If I push number eight or four or five or six, whichever number I push on the keypad, it'll change it to that filament, which is the one that I want, which is the ASA. I have my normal setup, which is just the standard setup. I haven't changed anything except for unchecking support and making sure that this says no brim. It's the only thing that I've changed in my setup. Okay, so now that all of that is ready to go, we'll go ahead and slice the plate. We'll see that it's gonna take about 39 minutes. And we'll go ahead and hit print plate. Everything looks good to go. And I'll see you when it gets done.
All right, so here we are a few hours later after making our model. I've printed out two different adapters so you can see how easy that is. And if you are enjoying today's video, be sure to smash that like button. So let me show you the two models that I printed. Now, what's amazing is how different these two adapters are. They came from the same model in Fusion 360. All I did was change the sizes of everything. And I gotta tell you, I've tried both of these out. They work great. Now, you might need to sneak up on the edges by a tenth of a millimeter or so to get a really good fit on these, but they only take about 40 minutes to print. So it's not so bad if you have to print a second one. Um, just measure twice so that you can print once, um, but you may need to print twice on some of these. I have had to sneak up on them a little bit. Um, so I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have a wood shop, if you've been looking to do these adapters, or if you've been looking for some inspiration into doing parametric modeling with Fusion 360, this is a great way to do it, as well as make parameters on everything that you create so that you can easily go in and change everything. And as you saw the way that we built that, everything changes. Um, accordingly as we change the inputs. And as you can see, the differences in these two um, prints actually came from the exact same model. We only changed the parameters of that model. So I hope today's video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to smash that like button and that subscribe button below, and I'll see you on next week's video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank mm -hmm. you.